welcome to Tuesday's News Today. We've got a lot on the way for you, including why protecting penguins is a black and white issue. But first, for some schools, for, but for some, school can be very stressful and it can be hard to remember to remain calm and patient. So I went to one school that's teaching all its pupils the importance of peace. Breathe in. Breathe out. Students of all ages at St. Bridges Girls National School in Glasnevin are learning techniques to stay calm and practice mindfulness. Here, junior infants are practicing their rainbow breathing technique. We keep calm. We do rainbow bus to keep us calm and fulfilling, and we might sell or scared. And, what do, and how do you do the rainbow bus? Can you, can you both show me your rainbow breath? St. Bridget's is a human value school, and every month focuses on a different value like love, truth, and non-violence. This month is peace, and the whole school has been doing lots of great activities. Teachers are working the ideas of positivity, staying calm, simplicity, and patience into their normal lessons. They say this helps with self-esteem, confidence, and behavior. Sixth class has been spending September creating projects on famous people who have spread a message of peace. Some girls did Rosa Parks and other people did Martin Luther King and we were learning about Mahatma Gandhi in history so other girls did him. And um, I did Malali Shafzai in my project. And what do you like about Malali? Um, well I admire her dedication for getting equal access to education for girls. And she does that like very peacefully without fighting or anything. We get a quote each week and we write it about a time we showed that value in our values copy. And our quote is, have patience in all things, but first of all in yourself. And we all love writing in our values copies because um, we can reflect on how we act and how we treat our friends. Students here also like to take a breather and practice some meditation. Fourth class made dream catchers to focus on all their hopes and wishes. So last week in it we made dream catchers as a sign of peace and we had to write some of our hopes and dreams. And my hopes and dreams are to be more mindful in school, to get a phone for Christmas and for the world to be a more peaceful place. All 460 students are so excited about practicing peace that they've captured it in a great song. Namaste. When I was a boy, there were cows in our house. The cows each had rooms for themselves, you know. Now for some of you, I say such a thing so that you may remember. Ah yes, cows in the house, that's how it was. How could I forget? I'd say you might remember such a thing. Did you have a cow in your house? No, we didn't have a cow. Well, for others, I say it so that for those who never knew such a thing, should know about it. When I was a boy, we had cows in our house. They were working animals. They pulled the plows in the field, so sacred. They gave us milk and we used the urine to, well, for, um, for sanitization. We didn't eat them. They were useful animals. We had great respect for them. It's all tractors now. And so as I go on to share my memories, I hope that they will wake up particular memories in you, and you, and you, and us all. And for some, you may remember the same things or similar things. Ah yes, that's how it was. That's how it is. Those are some of the decisions I've had to make. And for others, you may have experienced very different things. And that's okay. That's what we're here to think about. What was it like when we were young for each of us? What is it like now? What is different and special about each of us? And how did we all get here? The 38 bus. What do we all share? See, that's what I'm interested in. So, our house, when I was growing up. It was a big house. 
It had lots of rooms. It sat on an acre of land. It was a family house, but like for a big family, lots of people. Now my father owned 150 acres of land, mainly paddy fields. So we were affluent. I liked to watch the cows pull the plows in the field. It was very good. The family name is Mutumula. Mutumula, Mutumula. So it's M-U-T-T-U, M-U-L-L-A. Mutumula. Shall we try saying it together? Mutumula? Mutumula. Okay. Jagan Mutumula. So that's J-A-G. We, we won't do that again. So I have one brother. The house was on the farm. The farm is in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Now if you imagine India, it's like a triangle. Andhra is down to the bottom right, has a population of 5 million people. 50 million, sorry. My father wanted me to study medicine. I liked maths, I was good at maths, so medicine was no good and I didn't do well at it. Oh, I should say, we have two children, Lucky and Jeevi. Now I think you shouldn't make your children do things that they're not good at, that they don't like. It's about personal development. A bit of competition is a good thing, but you know, if you have delusions about what the child is capable of, then that's no good. I'll give you an example. I like lawn tennis. I play. I still play. I'm 48. So I took my son down to the local tennis club. It's just over there. And after the session, the coach came to me and he said, now whose idea was it to come down here, yours or his? And I said, it was mine. And he said, now he has his racket and his taste of it. Leave him until he asks you if he can join. It has to come from the child. But my father wasn't like that. So I gave up medicine and I spent three years studying for the civil service entrance exams. Three years of preparation, big exams. And then at that time, then I got an offer to lecture in plants at the local university. It was a hard decision, but in the end I decided not to do the exams and to take up the lectureship in botany. Plants. I like plants. You know, we go to the botanics, Kew Gardens and all that. But it's really genetics, how things work, photosynthesis. Not so much how you tell one plant apart from the other plant, taxonomy. More the biochemistry of it. But after a few years, the lectureship stopped being permanent. They became one-year contracts. You wouldn't know from one year to the next. If you had a job, you had to keep reapplying for the position. Now to get from here to the next bit. I need to talk to you about my guru, Satya Sai Baba. I'll say that again, Satya Sai Baba. I'm a man whose life has been changed by dreams. I am a man whose life has been changed by dreams. We all dream. Some of us have acted on those dreams. You see, at times of unhappiness, distress or difficulty, when I've been so unsure of what to do, my guru comes to me in a dream. He is my God, if you like. Now let me see. I am a Hindu. Now one thing about us Hindus is we don't think that all the other religions are wrong. Like some religions do. The Muslims and the Christians, the Catholic Church I mean, they think they're right and all the others are wrong. Now the actual people are all very good. I met a Muslim once and I said to him, so brother, you think everything is written? And he said, yes, everything is written. It is written at your birth and at the base of your spine too. Now, I've attended mosques and churches. Uh, there was a Catholic church where I was. I studied at the Loyola Institute, so I've experienced many religions. But the way we Hindus see it is that we're all looking for the source. Everyone is looking for the same thing, the source. In their own way, that's okay. There are many ways to get there. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Whatever way you see it, we're all looking for the source. And we don't just think that everyone else is wrong. And you see, I think we're living at a time when people are losing their traditions, whatever they are. They don't practice. For me, there is mind, body, and higher self. There is Brahma for creation. Vishnu for sustaining and Shiva for destruction, it's all part of life. There is karma, which is a doing thing. You do your karma and make your best effort to be your best self. And in doing that, when you are reborn, 
Your new life builds on the karma from your old life. And there are gods in everything. They have forms. There may be a god of money, a god of food. You see, it's all holy. I do the cooking, by the way. Did I tell you? I'm a house husband. Really good shops around here. Better spices than there are in India. You know, the export quality is better. Anyway, at the time of my crisis about my job, my guru, Satya Sai Baba, came to me in a dream. In the dream, it was like he introduced me to my brother and said, the two of you should talk. It was a very short dream and I woke out of it instantly. By my bed was a street dog that must have come in. It had never happened before and it ran out straight away. And I thought to myself, that must be my guru in the dog, bringing in my dream. Now my brother worked in IT in London, so I gave up my position lecturing in plants, went to London to take up a position in computers. This was 2001. It was an American company, Networks, and it depended on contracts. And after two years, they gave me the offer to take over the new headquarters in Ireland. It was in Dunleary, and so I came here. I was successful. I had listened to my guru, I had tried to make my karma, so I was okay with it. Now what I haven't said is that part of all of this, finding a career, making money, is so that I could marry. My family, the Muttamullahs, you'll remember, got together with another family not too far away and they arranged the wedding between them. You see, that's how it was done. I was sent a photograph in London. That's when I had my second dream. Satya Sai Baba came to me in my dream that night and said, marry this woman. And not only should you marry this woman, but this is the date and this is the time on which you should marry. So that's what I did. I should say that my wife is a communist and thinks this is all nonsense, the dreams that is. So I returned to India two weeks before the wedding. And that is where we first met at the airport. The two families were there and we were never alone before the wedding. That would not have been approved of. We did talk on the phone though. And the company that I worked for said, you can either stay in Dublin or go back to London. So after the wedding, I brought my wife to London and to Dublin and asked her which city she preferred to live in. She picked Dublin and that's why we're here. Now, my wife, Bindu, was a trained dentist. But her qualifications weren't recognized here or in the UK, it's tricky, you know. So she spent three years retraining, requalifying. We lived in a flat opposite St. Patrick's Cathedral. Oh, I should have said, astrology is all part of Hinduism. So we had our hands read. Now the astrologer said, if this man doesn't marry this woman on this day, then he'll never marry. And he said the same day as my guru had said in the dream, but he didn't know about that. So I said to my wife, proof. But she, anyhow. So then we had our son and moved here. Well, it's bought, mortgaged. 350,000 euro, 2005. It's worth about 280,000 now. They've never finished the shared garden. The builder went bust, but, but the kids can play on the street. So every day we would get up with Lucky at 5.30 so that we could drive him to the minder who lives around here. Then he would eat his breakfast and then she would bring him to school while I drove out to Dunleary for eight o'clock. My wife worked in Castle Blaney at the time. That was where her first job was. And then after school, he was collected by the lady from the creche where he'd stay until I could collect him. You see, my wife didn't drive at that stage, so it was a two-hour bus ride and the buses are like, you know what, so I had to go and get him. A man called John owned it and the creche closed at 6.30. So I was late for work most mornings, but that was okay. And then I'd have to drive back along the M50, uh, leaving at 4.30 and at that hour, you know, all the cars are backed up, so I would have to phone from the car and say, sorry John, I'm going to be late. And he'd say, Jagan, there is a 25 euro fine for that. And we'd get home at whatever and you know, Jeevi would be like that on the couch and he couldn't even eat his tea. And I was doing a master's at the Smurfit Business School at that time, so most evenings I had to drive back out. And we said, this couldn't go on. It wasn't good for the boy. Bindu said, look, she hadn't qualified twice as a dentist to give it up. She likes her work. So we talked about it and I became a house husband. I'm busier now than I ever was. My goal is to change the Irish educational system 
so that all children have firmly established moral values that last them through life. This will transform society. If a child takes on these good values at a young age, then they're formed for life. And you change the children, you change the culture. This is what we call education in human values. The five core values are truth, love, peace, non-violence, righteousness. It's entirely non-religious. As I was saying, I see people losing their traditional guidance where once children would listen, this is how to live a good life from the church or mosque or temple, whatever, they don't listen anymore, they're not interested, they're on their phones. So I think we need to get down below religion now to what makes us all human. We're all looking for the source. After I became a house husband, I was driving along here and I saw a poster for Leo Varadkar. That was it, really. I liked the look of him and so I phoned him in his office. His secretary's name is Mary and we're quite friendly now, but that was the first time. And so she said, come in. And so I went in and there he was tapping at his computer and so we talked. It wasn't because he was Indian or his parents are Indian, although he is a politician, he made sure I knew that. Remember what I was saying about karma? Well, Leo is a man with good karma. See, when he started off as a counsellor, there was a bigger political family around here. And, you know, if you, you would have said them. But they're still counsellors and now he's like the main man. So it's like he's done good things, but it's also worked for him. The flow, right place, right time. It's like he's doing his karma, but he's also benefiting from his karma from a previous life. And he's trying to be a moral man, I think. That's important in a leader. I did talk to other politicians. What's her name from around here? Um, Joan Burton. And Brian Lenehan, I met him. He invited me to the doll in, in the dining room, in the, in the place where we ate. And I had my credit card ready and he said, no, no, no. The state will get this. Very nice. In India, we have the caste system. So you've got the Brahmins at the top, you know, the priests, the rulers, the warriors. Then you have the tradesmen, the farmers, those that work, dig the drains, all of that. Now, I see the same thing in Ireland, although you don't have the little mark. It's the same. But I think for a good society, everyone, no matter in which community they're in, should be able to do well. Off the core values, peace. See, people get peace and non-violence mixed up. Non-violence is political, whereas peace is inner. Peace. If I am calm and at peace with myself, then I can be happy no matter what. Same for anyone. And if I have inner peace, then I can do my duty by my family and my wife. Now, I have no problem with my wife having the career. You know, the community can be quite traditional. The men go to work, but all that is changing. So I joined the Fine Gael party. My wife is a member of the party. Even though she is a communist, she doesn't pay her membership. I do. And we talked about repeal here. Now, my wife and I have different views, but we respect each other. And in the end, we agreed that the most important thing is the woman's health. So we voted yes, and we campaigned for it. We flyered around here. It wasn't for the party. The party was deeply divided on the issue. It was because we thought it best for the woman's health and the community. I met with Richard Bruton last week uh, about education and human values. He's the Minister of Education. Now he said changing the curriculum is very hard. I know, I understand. You know, people think the Minister of the Taoiseach very powerful, but they've got to work with the system. There is a system, it has its ways, and it's very hard to go against that. The Taoiseach can give confidence to people that things are going well, but it's very hard even for him to go against the system. So I understand. But there's the school in Glasnevin where they've put the program in for the kids and they can see the benefit. So I think if people see that, then it'll happen. India is a huge country. There's 17 official languages and 500 or more other languages. So to do it there is going to be very hard. Ireland is a small country and it can happen in the system. I see Ireland as being in a great place. It's in Europe, it's between Europe and America and it has strong links to Asia. So it can thrive for 20 years. But I think the time for Ireland India, France, that's over. I'm in a WhatsApp group for my family and we talk to each other from Australia, the USA, Poland. My brother is in Warsaw now. And if there's a problem in the family, the mothers will let us know. 
they'll get involved. It's like, Jagan, what are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> so it's just as it was, but now it's spread all over the world. I've got to keep an eye on the time because I need to collect my daughter in 15 minutes. In her school, St. Mokta's, just over there, in her class of 27, there are children from 24 countries. There are some 44 nationalities in the whole school. This area, Dublin West, it's a global village. Now, one day my son may emigrate to San Francisco. That's okay, I emigrated. It's all changed. But I think it is challenging for the next generation. You see, if someone says something nasty to me about my being here, it's okay, I understand. You know, maybe they have troubles of their own, they feel challenged, whatever. But if someone says to my son, you're not Irish, well, he was born here, he is Irish, so it's a bit more difficult for him. And I'd like to say to members of the Indian community, with great respect, I think we need to integrate a bit more, participate a bit more. When people say, oh, we don't want to vote because it's not our country, I think that is wrong. We need to be good citizens. See, we are a part of this, and we need to show the children how they are part of this. And to other communities, I'll say, look, we come from different places, different backgrounds, different colored skin, all of that, different languages. You know, your story may be a lot like mine. You may recognize a lot of what I say. Your story might be a bit like mine. Your life might be completely different from mine. But on our paths, we are all here. And we're all looking for the source. That's what we share. So that's my goal, to transform Irish society by educating children in shared human values, non-religious. See, I'm a man of peace, love, and non-violence. I grew up in a house that had cows in it, I keep up with my brother on WhatsApp. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming. You know, I was quite scared when we started, but you know, now I'm quite pleased. So thank you and love all, serve all.